All right, guys. Um, I thought that was a neat little video about checking out your awareness, what you're looking for, because um, you'll never know what you're going to find. But give me a second here to focus this in. All right. So today I got for you guys completing the square, um, and it's the second part of it. I'm going to add one more layer of difficulty to it. Um, so it's four problems. Just four problems to go through, and then I'll let you guys try out your homework. Um, <clears throat> but just in case you guys forgot from yesterday, we are going to need to know this equation, c equals b divided by 2 to the quantity squared, uh, because the equation c equals b divided by 2 to the quantity squared is a very important equation, because c equals b divided by 2 to the quantity squared helps you find that last part that makes you a perfect trinomial. So please do me a favor and don't forget c equals b divided by 2 to the quantity squared, because again, c equals b divided by 2 to the quantity squared is quite important. I know, am I annoying yet? I'm trying to be. Okay, so over here, number one, I need to get my x squared and my 4x by itself. So I'm going to subtract 1 over, leave a little space, it equals negative 1. Now I'm going to use my good old equation, c equals b divided by 2 to the quantity squared, which again, I'm hoping you didn't forget, c equals b divided by 2 quantity squared, <coughs> because it will help you. My b is 4, so 4 over 2 to the quantity squared, and we're to reduce it down. Okay. Um, <coughs> pardon me. And then 2 squared gives me 4. So I'm going to add 4 left. I'm going to add 4 right. Okay. Now the good news is that right here, this becomes a perfect trinomial. I can factor it. The last thing in my parentheses before I square it comes over here. Okay. Negative 1 plus 4 is 3. Very good. We are going to square root left, square root right. Bingo, bingo, okay, subtract 2 over, negative 2 plus or minus root 3. <clears throat> we are all good, okay? So very, very nice. Um, now, let's see how we can make this a little more difficult. I know, you guys are all thinking that, right? Write the following quadratic functions in vertex form by completing the square, then identify the vertex and graph the quadratic. So, this is actually a tremendously helpful thing because it allows us to graph our, we can change our standard form equation of a line into vertex form which vertex form is by far and away the easiest form now here's the thing that's difficult you guys see how it says y equals i need to keep everything on one side so what we're going to do is i'm going to bump my plus seven in this problem to the outside okay so here we go i'm going to do c equals b divided by two to the quantity squared I don't know where I heard that from before. Um, and my b is 6. So I do 6 over <coughs> 2 to the quantity squared. 6 over 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9. All right. Here's where I need you guys to stay with me. You plus 9 here. And yesterday we learned plus 9 over here as well. But I want to keep y equals by itself. So if I add 9 on this side, you could also subtract 9 on the same side, and it will maintain its equality. Let this one sink in for a minute. I did 9 minus 9. What's 9 minus 9? 0. So I maintain my equality. Now inside my parentheses, this becomes now, I can go ahead and factor this, the x. The last thing in the parentheses was plus 3. And then what's 7 minus 9? Negative 2. Huh. Look how amazingly awesome this is. And yes, I just used amazingly awesome in the same sentence in the math problem. Uh, the vertex is opposite the same, okay, because this is in vertex form. Negative 3, negative 2, I can build my way around it. <coughs> negative 3, negative 2 is down here, which means my AOS is x equals negative 3. Not to forget that stuff. <coughs> Pardon me. If I put negative 2 up here, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. 1 squared minus 2 is negative 1. And then if I put negative 1 in here, negative 1 plus 3 is 2. 2 squared is 4, minus 2 is 2. So, mm -hmm. Cool, cool. Go ahead and graph it. All is well. Okay. But again, please note out here the hardest part with the new one is when you add 9. I You could, again, add 9 over here, but to get to the other side, you subtract it back over. All right? Awesome. Let's take a look at two more. Okay. Um, much the same in difficulty for number 2. All right. You get it by itself, meaning the x squared minus 2x. Leave a space. Minus 4. Same idea. Now, c equals 
totally going to say it. B divided by 2 to the quantity squared. All right, and then your B is negative 2. Negative 2 divided by 2 is negative 1. And negative 1 squared gives me 1. So I can do plus 1. Oops. And then on the outside, see, I'm jumping the gun too much here. If I add 1 on the inside, on the outside I have to subtract 1. It's totally a minus sign. All right. How do I do that? Because, again, I'm trying to maintain my equality. So y equals inside the parentheses. Um, the last thing inside the parentheses before I squared it was negative 1. So I have x minus 1 the quantity squared. Negative 4 minus 1 is negative 5. Very good. Okay. Again, this is very nice because it puts it into uh, vertex form. So my vertex is 1, negative 5, meaning my AOS is x equals 1. Okay, so I go back, I go forward, put in a 2 here, 2 minus 1 squared is 1, 1 squared is 1, minus 5 is negative 4, 3 minus 2 is 1, sorry, 3 minus 1 is 2, 2 squared is 4, minus 5 is negative 1. Okay, mm -hmm. 2, negative 4. Okay, connect the dots. And we're good. All right. One last final problem. Now, here's where it gets a little crazy. Because I know yesterday we talked about you cannot have a number in front of your x squared. So please note what I'm going to do first. Okay. Do it the exact same way we've just been doing. Here's the next question. Is there a number that can go into negative 3 and into 12? 3. Now, also, I need my front, my first term to be positive. So I'm going to factor out a negative 3 from this. And the negative 5 is just chilling on the outside. Okay? So just slow down for a minute. Do the same thing you've been doing. And whatever number is out front, I could promise you, whatever this number is, you will be able to factor out. Otherwise, you cannot do completing the square. Okay? So I will not give you a problem where you do not take out the number out front. So I factored out a negative 3 from negative 3x squared and a 12x, leaving me with x squared minus 4x. Now, I'm going to forget about that for a minute, and I'm going to go back to my equation. C equals b divided by 2, the quantity squared. My b is negative 4. Okay, do my thing here. And then I square it, I get 4. So, I'm going to put plus 4 in here. Here's where your head's going to hurt, right? I put a plus 4 inside of here, so I should put a minus 4 out here, correct? But, bear with me. Remember this negative 3? What you've actually done here without even realizing it is, if I multiply this negative 3 in, what's negative 3 times 4? Negative 12. So what do I have to put out here? The opposite of negative 12, which is positive 12. And really slow things down for a minute, okay? All we're doing is, if you take a number out, the number that you put inside here, okay, that goes right here, you have to ask yourself, what is this times that? Because that's what you actually put inside there. In this case, negative 3 times positive 4 was negative 12, and the opposite of negative 12 is positive 12. And now we continue on with our problem. So negative 3, the last thing in the parentheses was negative 2, plus 7. It's easy once that, the only thing difficult, and the only thing that you guys are going to forget, is everyone's going to put down plus 4 here, minus 4 there. Okay, I'm telling that's the number one mistake people are going to make. You have to be careful and just double check. Whatever's out here, you multiply in. I don't have to worry about any other problems when my leading coefficient is 1. But whenever I have to factor out GCF, that's when you do. So now it's, let's see here, 2, 7, go back, here's my vertex. My AOS is x equals 2. Um, if I plug a 3 in here, 3 minus 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Times negative 3 is negative 3. Plus 7 is 4. And then 4 is 4 minus 2 is 2. 2 squared is 4. Times negative 3 is negative 12. Plus 7 is negative 5. Okay. So what that looks like over here, 2, 7. 1, 4. 3, 4. Okay. 
here we go. So, um, I know these problems are a little tougher, okay? So, again, our next homework assignment, which you guys are going to work on, all right, I'd like you to try out a few of these, okay? So, for your homework, all right, I would like you guys to do practice B, the sheet from yesterday, numbers, we're going to go, let's see here, 4 and 5, so 4 through 5, um, 10 through 12, and then we're going to try out 18 through 27. Okay, so it's right here if you guys need it. Um, again, uh, only the ones here I'll show you guys real quick for 18 through 27. This is the only three adopt the new ones. The other ones are just, again, practicing complete the square, which will help you greatly. Okay, so go ahead and give that a try and see how it goes. All right, um, and we should be in good shape. Okay, all right, good luck. You're all.